Tom Shelley with Space Adventures here with a quick look at the difference between a suborbital and an orbital spaceflight. Suborbital spaceflights have been in the news recently because of Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin's first passenger flights. But what's the difference between these flights and the orbital space flights completed by all of Space Adventures clients, from Dennis Tito back in 2001 to Yusaku Maizawa, who will be flying later this year? Well, the first big difference is the height above Earth. In this photograph, taken from the International Space Station, you can clearly see the different layers of Earth's atmosphere. And a suborbital flight, shown in red, reaches an altitude of about 80 to 100 kilometers and barely touches the edge of space, whereas an orbital space flight reaches an altitude of about 400 kilometers. The next big difference is the speed you reach. On a suborbital flight, the engine burns for about a minute. You coast to the top of the hill and then fall back down to Earth. Whereas on an orbital flight, your rocket accelerates for about nine minutes and you reach the speeds approaching 28,000 kilometers an hour, at which point you're traveling fast enough to continue to fall around the Earth or be in Earth orbit. Another big difference is the view. On a suborbital flight, you have a few minutes to look out basically at the place you took off from. Whereas on an orbital space flight, your view is constantly changing as you circle the Earth every 90 minutes. You see sunrises and sunsets, oceans, continents, weather systems, and even the aurora. The last difference is the time in space. Just a few minutes in the case of a suborbital flight, but many days up to two weeks in the case of an orbital flight. So there you have it. There really is a stark difference between these two space flights. Thank you for tuning in. Ad Astra.